think what we heard uh, from Mr. Left today uh, was an unfortunate reality that um, DPRK and Russia are engaged in uh, military cooperation that is should be of major concern to the broader international community. Um, the transfer of technology uh, from Russia to the DPRK, as we expect we're going to see through this new con uh, comprehensive strategic uh, partnership treaty, um, we think that this potential transfer of um, military technology uh, is something that the United States, its partners, other countries around the world are going to be extremely concerned, are going to be watching this very closely, and I suspect China will be doing so as well. So I, I think um, this level of cooperation uh, should be, as I said, of great concern in the international community, and then you have the issue of uh, DPRK transferring um, missiles and other technology to Russia that it's using in its savage war against Ukraine. So, uh, you, you know, Mr. Left's examples that he used in the briefing, I think, uh, were quite telling, uh, quite concerning, uh, and I think will motivate uh, countries that are not looking at this issue as closely uh, as they should. And that's, I think, was the result of this briefing. The international community should frankly be alarmed at what DPRK and Russia are doing together militarily. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how our Chinese friends uh, react uh, because they also have a partnership of no limits with uh, the Russian Federation. Uh, and uh, this, of course, is raising tension levels in uh, the Indo-Pacific. Uh, and uh, countries are undoubtedly going to look for ways uh, to improve their security given this new threat that we're seeing from DPRK and Russia. We have for years uh, been looking to do what we could to increase our deterrence. We will continue to do that. Uh, we will continue to conduct exercises with uh, our allies. Uh, we will be uh, sharing information and cooperation. We'll be looking at new ways uh, to defend against these new threats. Uh, but the core issue here is we have a permanent member of the Security Council in clear violation of UN Security Council resolutions with regard to the DPRK. Resolutions, by the way, that this permanent member, Russia, voted in favor of. Um, so um, this is a unique situation we have here. And we are very concerned uh, that this partnership, comprehensive partnership between Russia and DPRK um, grows. And um, I think, frankly, China has got to be greatly concerned about this issue. Um, and so uh, we'll be, you know, obviously consulting closely with our partners uh, to look for ways to enhance our deterrence. Uh, and, but we're not going to allow uh, the DPRK and Russia to continue uh, with this type of cooperation without there being uh, the necessary deterrent steps taken uh, to improve our security. Well, we're looking at various options to do that because we think the reporting aspect uh, that the panel of experts provided, uh, it's now gone away, but we need to continue to provide the committee with the necessary reporting. And I think uh, reports uh, such as the one uh, we heard from Mr. Jeff, uh, th this is important information. The international community uh, needs to hear about what DPRK is doing uh, with regard to technology, uh, what it is doing with regard to arms transfers, uh, and it clearly focuses his reporting uh, other reports that we have focus on this clear-cut violation of UN Security Council resolutions, uh, frankly, and it's um, we're very concerned, obviously, about the level of cooperation and that level increasing. So, um, these are, this is new territory um, where you have this permanent member engaging with a rogue state uh, to undermine international peace and security. So, um, to answer your your question. Yes, we are looking at a number of options, uh, and uh, we will do. Some, we will work on some things to uh, to enable to provide uh, the committee uh, with the, you know, objective information it needs to be able to do its work. Well, if, if sanctions are failing, it's because they're not being enforced, and uh, basically, certain countries are abetting sanctions evasion. Uh, you have a situation where we've seen the reports about um, 
DPRK testing uh, MERV systems. They don't have the capability at this point uh, to deploy uh, multiple warheads uh, on a missile. Uh, so, but this, again, we have to look at this carefully uh, and it's concerning that they are in some way uh, looking into uh, MERV technology uh, and uh, they're looking into the use of hypersonics. Uh, this is of great concern and uh, to us uh, to our friends and allies, and it should be to the rest of the global community. Uh, and, and again, all of this activity between DPRK and uh, Russia, and just DPRK alone, its activities uh, in the nuclear and ballistic missile field um, are clear violations of Security Council resolutions. An important uh, point here to, to reiterate, uh, because again, um, what we're seeing now is a permit, one permanent member clearly, openly, violating these council resolutions that it voted to support. So, really problematic.